Hello everyone and welcome to Campus Channel. I'm here with Toulouse School of Management and we're going to be talking about the Master in International Management. In order to do so, I have the pleasure to welcome three guests of honor. The first one, Audrey Rouziès, full professor, head of the first year of the MIME. How are you, Audrey? I'm fine, thank you, Guillaume. And we're welcoming also uh, another full professor, the head of the second year of the MIME. Uh, she's called Nicola Merck. How are you, Nicola? Hello, Guillaume. I'm fine, thank you. And the last but not least, uh, one of your students, uh, he's a student in the Master International Management, second year, Mehdi Sapati. Hello, Mehdi, how are you? I'm fine, thanks. Hope you're good. Well, thanks, to the three, thanks for the three of you for answering my future questions. Let's move on to the pitch. The pitch is a 60 second talk in which you're going to have to tell me everything that I need to know about the Master in International Management. Who's going to start? I will. Okay, well, I will let you start then. Welcome to the presentation of the Master in International Management at TSM. If you wish to manage international projects uh, or multicultural teams, well, the MIM is made for you. It's a two-year program, entirely taught in English, and it mixes each year about 15 to 20 different nationalities. The Master in International Management is a generalist program in which you will acquire knowledge and skills in all management disciplines, such as marketing, human resource management, finance, accounting, strategy, or management control, but with a strong emphasis on the international dimension. The program um, can be done uh, in Toulouse or in one of our double degree in Thailand or in Belgium. In this master, we value diversity, professionalism, and most of all, multicultural learning for students to grow both personally and professionally. So if you recognize yourself in our values, don't hesitate to apply. All right, well, without the delay that I caused, it would have been perfect. Right on the clock, let's move on to the next session, the program. Audrey, during the admission process, what skills, what skills sorry, or qualities do you look for in your students? Well, we do have five criteria uh, that we take into consideration. The first one, of course, is academic record. Okay, so your performance at school and in the, in the, at the bachelor degree, for instance. Then we require a C1 level in English. Uh, because the, the, the program is taught in English and you have to be fully operated in, in English, so English level. The third dimension is uh, the international experience. Every member uh, of the program has to have a sort of international experience, can be an exchange program abroad, can be a, an internship abroad, can be uh, being au pair, for instance. So this, these are important requirements. Then we value also um, the professional experience through, again, internship, jobs, uh, any type of uh, professional experience that you can have. And finally, motivation. Uh, we. Um, we uh, aim to have students who know why they join us and that are highly motivated. And we check that through two types of, uh, so an application file with all the documents required and also uh, an interview, uh, motivation interview uh, via a platform where you can actually record um, uh, an interview and then we watch it. And that's how we select people. Okay, thank you for making that clear for me. Nicola, the TSM Masters in International Management is an EFMD accredited program. Why is that important for a student? How is that relevant? Uh, well, indeed, since 2008, the MIM is accredited by the EFMD, uh, which is um, a quality uh, accreditation. And so that's how it is important for students, but also for us and for um, the professor team. Um, because um, here we have uh, specific international standards that are set by the EFMD 
on very different dimensions, be it uh, teaching quality, uh, course uh, outline on uh, insertion rates, on alumni uh, network uh, management, on the professionalization of students during the program, on international dimensions um, of the cohort, for instance, the um, process of selection that already just um, described. So many, many different um, um, domains in which uh, it is very important for the students to have a structure and to have uh, uh, processes that uh, will guarantee uh, already equality and justice among students. And then also afterwards when they join um, the quality of the program that is delivered and um, the accreditation is a means for checking that. So every five years uh, we have audits uh, where um, auditors come and meet um, professor staff, ask the management team, then also the administrative team at TSM and also students, current students and alumni in order to see whether we are up to standards uh, and so, um, and that is something also um, which is uh, on a continuous uh, level our preoccupation that um, we always, well, uh, improve uh, on uh, the different dimensions that um, the accreditation is, uh, is based on. Audrey, would you say, regarding, uh, but like, depending on Nicolas' answer, would you say that Toulouse School of Management is the international authority in management? or is an international authority in management? You mean the school in general? Well, it could be the school or it could be the, the master in international management. The master? Yeah, well, I think, I think uh, well, particularly the master, yes, I would say so. Uh, I mean, the master has been standing f since uh, 2003 and EFMD acc accredited since 2008. Uh, and f since that time, I mean, we have had accumulated a lot of knowledge. Uh, we have welcomed students from more than 75 different nationalities. Uh, our alumni work in uh, more than... Uh, 125 countries uh, so it's really truly an international learning experience and it's a truly international community so i would say so yeah okay well thank you very much nicola one last question before we move on to the next session and maybe i haven't forgotten about you don't worry what's innovative about the pedagogy used in this master and how does it take into account the fact that we now live in a digital world first uh, indeed, we have several um, digitalization approaches that we have put in the master program. Uh, we actually put the whole program 100% uh, online during COVID since we have a very international student cohort and we didn't want um, people we already selected and that uh, counted on this master program to not be able to graduate. So we switched all online and which actually was a very nice um, experience experimental place then because we could um, try out very different um, new techniques and so on and so we kept those who work well so we do a lot of uh, inverse pedagogic for instance uh, especially in the second year where students are already quite mature but also in the first year and where the idea is that students um, uh, prepare class content a, a lot at home uh, alone and also in groups and so that we can uh, be very interactive in the classroom then. Then we use uh, digital tools. Um, I don't want to name them here because uh, it's a competitive landscape, uh, but uh, that allow for doing uh, quizzes, uh, for doing collaborative work at distance. Um, and um, we ask students also to, for instance, do videos as being um, a final assessment uh, form. Uh, and so on. So we try to integrate as much as possible. Uh, however, I have to say in this master program uh, where the multicultural gathering of students in a room is very important for them because this really brings you to, um, to see uh, many people from different countries uh, uh, daily and uh, in a, a very socialized setting, I would say. That is something very important. So after we had these 100% uh, online COVID years, um, the students begged us to bring them back to the classroom and, uh, and to really be able to embrace fully this multicultural mingling uh, on a daily basis. So we also respect that a lot. And so we have also a lot in the classroom. 
All right, Mehdi, obviously, I will ask you a question about that. But first, let's move on to the cliches. The cliches are about preconceptions that you might have had once you've applied, before you applied, once you've graduated, regarding Toulouse School of Management, regarding a Master in International Management. Mehdi, what would be the first cliché that comes to your mind? That Toulouse is the best student city in France. And I'd say <laughs> it's a cliché, but it's also true. Because there's a nice blend of academic life as well as the social life, the cultural aspects of Toulouse which is very great for students, for these students very well, and especially international students. That's one thing I'd say is a cliche and true. Okay, so it would be like we said that Toulouse is a good city and it actually is a good city for students. Could you like yes. sell the city a little, bit, a little bit more? Like tell us what you do when you're in Toulouse and why it's the best city? Okay, so first of all, it's nestled in the south of France, which makes it ideal in terms of weather. You find a balance the perfect temperature, which is very good for a student academically and socially. And aside that, there's the cultural aspect of things where students are able to take part in activities that happen in the city, cultural ones as well as social ones like party, <laughs> which have to be mentioned. But aside that, it also gives you a chance to meet a network with other students, which you realize are like you and from diverse and various backgrounds all over the world. And aside that, um, yes, the cost of living is extremely low for a student, which makes it perfect. So, of course, I think the blend of all this makes it the best student city in France, I would say. All right, you just made me want to be a student again in Toulouse. Audrey, what would be the first cliche that comes to your mind? Well, you know, um, TSM is the School of Management of the University of Toulouse Capital. And very often when I myself introduce and say I'm I'm civil servant at the University of Toulouse, people will say, oh, come on, civil servant, they are lazy, they are always on strike. And that's absolutely the contrary here at TSM. Uh, we have a bunch of highly committed uh, international colleagues, uh, faculty members, staff uh, are highly committed. We are, we are part of a research lab that is uh, on the top uh, of the rankings in France and in, and in Europe. So truly um, come here to check that the cliche of lazy civil servant is not true. All right, so you have a nice weather and people willing to work under the sun. That's how amazing it is. <laughs> Nicola, what would be the cliche that comes to your mind? Um, well, something that I hear a lot from students uh, in the beginning of courses is about um, the lack of professional um, uh, professionalism or of um, professional skill acquisition. And um, very often students think that uh, university is uh, mostly about academic knowledge, about theories and concepts. That is also true because that is very important in order to analyze objectively many different situations. However, then um, the professional component and where students are really facing real life um, um, situations, issues, challenges, many practitioners and so on, that is also true actually. And especially in France, which is a particularity of France already, but then um, all the more in this master program where we strive to have, especially in the second year, a lot of practitioners uh, giving classes and sharing with the students a very concrete operational life. And then uh, also through um, the work experience students can acquire during the master. It's a total of uh, 12 months that they have uh, the opportunity to have internships during the master program. Uh, and uh, even two years if they do a gap year between the first and the second year which is something we encourage a lot and uh, which a lot of students also do. All right, well, let's, check, let's move on to studying abroad. Nicola, I'm going to ask you that question because it's about double degree in Asia, the IMAC or in Europe, IMEC, you will correct me if I'm wrong. What are the criteria I would need to meet in order to graduate with a double degree from Europe? Uh, well, the criteria are actually the same for the selection of students than for the program in Toulouse. Um, what uh, happens here in the course of the double uh, programs is that students uh, will study the first year of the master in Toulouse. 
um, so they are with a regular cohort. And then for the second year, they will go and study uh, for the IMAC program in um, Thailand at the College of uh, Mayadol University, which is first university in Thailand. And here it's also a, a university business school um, and where courses are lasting for eight months. And then students have six months to do an internship, like those who stay in Toulouse. And uh, in the case of Belgium, well, here too, students stay the first year in Toulouse, go the second year then to Belgium. Um, and here it's with KU Leuven, uh, excellent university uh, in Belgium. And uh, on the Brussels campus, so they're in the heart of Brussels for the double degree, and they follow here courses for uh, nine months. And then they do uh, an internship uh, afterwards. And for internship, they can stay in the regions, they do the double degree, it's in or go to anywhere else in the world, what most students do in our master. Mary, what, what did you choose? So I chose the full track in France program option. Okay, so you can you can have a double degree, or you can have the I would say the the French track. And what did, what makes you choose the, the French track instead of the double degree, for example? Yeah, so I chose the French track because professionally, um, I would also want to develop myself in the European context, and more specifically in the French aspect of things being circled or surrounded by the French environment, picking up on the French language and yeah, starting my European career or journey in the French environment. But it doesn't, doesn't mean it's limited to the French context of things, but it's just a starting point to a more global way. So I just chose the path of the French way. Like others chose the Asian way or the Belgian way, but in the end, it's all about being global. So this is just the route I took. You choose an international way. Um, do I mean, we talked about uh, mingling and how students needed to, to be together and how it was important for them to actually like meet each other. Uh, do students get along, Mehdi? And uh, what's the academic background of the other students? Yes, so I'll definitely say students get along with TSM and in the master's program as well. Um, I think it has to do with general, the background of each individual. Everyone is unique coming from a diverse background or having experience to some extent with multicultural backgrounds. So there's definitely an easy blend when it comes to how we mingle with each other or how we associate with each other. In addition, the course helps, I think, spread these values as well because we do learn how to understand different cultures cross-culturally or multiculturally, so that helps. So the academic background varies. So you have a wide array of people with diverse backgrounds. We have individuals who come from bachelors with some internships or experiences abroad as high as individuals with phds with masters or with who have spent a, a large part of their professional careers working in industries or companies so it, it, mean, it varies to a large extent very diverse maybe i have maybe i don't know if it's a trick question but is there anything you didn't like about this program because you're a second year student so you've been through the whole two years almost is there anything i know when I say you didn't like, maybe you wish you had more. Yeah, I think I wish I had more is the best term I'd use. But I speak, I think, for some people when I say, for the non-French speakers, where I think, aside everything, maybe they'd be, they'd, they'd appreciate more lessons in French just to add on to their experience in France. I think that's one thing I'd say for the non-French okay. speakers who are trying to learn you mentioned the, the, the variety of uh, academic backgrounds. Is it the same when it comes to international or to nationalities? I mean, is, it, uh, um, is there as many nationalities as you have academic background, for example, among the students? Yes, completely. So I'd say yes, it's a diverse cohort, like I mentioned. So you have people as far as Ecuador to Nigeria, from the Netherlands to um, as far as uh, Honduras, basically there's different backgrounds from different continents, which is a very interesting learning experience because you do hardly find a room full of people that diverse, except for if it's a UN conference, for example. So this is actually great to be a UN conference because you have representatives from everywhere in the world.
so it's international students for international management or international management for international students. Before we move to Who Am I Medi, could you give me three words in order to describe your experience at Toulouse School of Management? Okay, so I'd say collaborative, um, diverse or multicultural, sorry. And the last one would be professional. Well, thank you, Medi. Let's move on to Who Am I? A picture speaks more than a thousand words and that's what we're going to try to demonstrate with Who Am I? I'm going to introduce you to three people. I will tell you who they are and you will tell me which one according to you stands the most for Toulouse School of Management and the Master in International Management. So the first three people, the three people I'm going to introduce you to, I'm sure you, you must know at least two of them, maybe three of them well. They are very famous. And I will tell you why I picked those people. We talked about double degree. And uh, Bernard Arnault in the center, he's a French businessman, he's a, an investor, an art collector, he's the co-founder and chairman of LVMH. I mean, you know him probably as much as I do. Um, but he also applied, he did ask for the Belgium nationality before he changed his mind due to moral reasons. So, I mean, there was a link between Belgium and Bernard Arnault and the management and international management. So that could be it. Or maybe he has the spirit that you're looking for in your students. Uh, the second one, it would be Jack Ma. We talked about like uh, Asian exchange. We talk about like uh, m morality a lot. And uh, he's a Chinese business magnate. But not only is he an investor, he's a philanthropist. In 2019, he was in Asia 2019, Heroes of Philanthropy for his work supporting underprivileged communities in China, Africa, Australia and the Middle East. So he has, um, I don't know, he has like a big, a big entrepreneur mind and a big heart as well. And the last one, <laughs> Master Yoda, maybe you're wondering why I picked that one. Yeah, it's not obvious. However, your new tagline, your new tagline, sorry, for Toulouse School of Management is the path ahead. And the path ahead made me think of something very wise, someone that, that would give you like wise advice. Maybe that's, that's maybe, maybe Mehdi, sorry, that's how you picture your, your professors as like Master Yoda giving you like wise advice to help you build your path, to follow the path ahead. That's why I picked him. Audrey, we'll let you start. Which one, according to you, suits the most for Toulouse School of Management and the meme? Honestly, Guillaume, I'm hesitating between Master Yoda and Jack Ma. <laughs> But as I know that Nicola will choose Master Yoda, <laughs> I, I will choose Jack Ma. Um, why is that? Because what I observe in the students that we recruit is that more and more or we observe students who are willing to give back, who are willing to enter into you know, sustainability, sustainable position where they could, where it's not only about making money, it's also about helping people to grow in, in different countries. In, um, so I think uh, in that sense, not all of our students, I mean, we don't train philanthropists, of course, uh, we are a management school, so we train managers. However, in the value we convey, uh, respect, ethics, rigor, diversity, all these aspects, I think uh, we aim to train people who are uh, yeah, respectful of each other and who are um, committed to develop sustainable businesses, let's say. So for that reason, uh, Jack Ma, I think, reflects well our values. Well, Jack Ma, so Nicola, it's going to be about Master Yoda, I guess. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> Audrey knows me well. <laughs> so indeed. For me, um, you, Master Yoda incarnates perfectly this master in the sense that um, he stands for wisdom and especially tolerance uh, towards other cultures. And uh, he's also somebody training um, then um, all these um, um, so, Jedi's. <laughs> so maybe we can here make a parallel with the students in the past as being the Jedi's. I don't know, maybe. <laughs> but I um, if I, I'm not a Star Wars specialist, but I have the impression that Yoda was also quite alone with his species uh, going around. And I think there are also students in the master that when they arrive, they feel a bit like that, uh, being uh, one of a kind, coming from a country, not having anybody else in the room. They know. And so um, that is also something 
that Yoda transmits that way of going towards the other and uh, making contact and preaching um, the good. All right, Mehdi, so your teachers are showing you the path to follow. Normally you should pick Bernard Arnault, but you can pick any of the, t of the three. Which one is it going to be? Yeah, I think it will be a blend between Master Yoda and Jacques Ma as well, I agree. Master Yoda in the sense that, yes, he's showing Jedi the way, and he's not just showing the way orally, but he also shows them techniques and things they have to do to, to basically fight. So, yeah, we, I can see that we have that in TSM. And Jack Ma in the sense that, yes, you find individuals from various backgrounds with various dreams and projections ahead, a lot of which are quite selfless even if you look at their history in terms of experience and you look at the plans they have. And I think it sums up to Yoda in the sense that we do get sensibility or sensationalized on the fact that the world is changing. We're paying more attention to ESG and sustainability. So I think that's the perfect blend. Check my what? Yoda. Well, so the path ahead it is. And let's see what happens after. So Audrey, uh, so how, I mean, you mentioned the number of alumni in this program, but is there a proper help between all the students? Yeah, well, definitely, I think uh, what we observe is that uh, because of the multicultural background, and as Nicola said, because of the fact when the students arrive, they feel a bit lonely, there's usually a very good cohesion in, the, in, in each group, uh, and the students are get along very well together and you know how much important it is when you have a great experience then you keep in touch so we do have we have organized our alumni network around a uh, linkedin group where that is actually pretty active where people will post offers for job offers for internship uh, and we'd also have close connection. Uh, I mean, the, 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 the head of program, the two of us, Nicola and I, we also have close connection with the alumni. They send us um, offers, they send us proposition, they want to intervene in our program. We have a lot of, as Nicola said, a lot of practitioner conferences and some of these practitioners are actually alumni of the program. So yeah, there's a nice network and a nice connection uh, between the, the, the students that are currently in the program and the alumni. All right, maybe you can like say the, the last bit of the, of the answer because we didn't get it. Oh, sorry. I said that there's, there's uh, a nice connection uh, between the current students, those who are in class and who have the opportunity to meet with uh, alumni who are actually teaching in the program. So this creates a sort of a red line, red thread between the, the current student and the alumni. Thank you. Nicola, I asked Audrey what were the criteria to uh, be a good student, to be a good fit, and what you were looking for in your students before they apply or once they've applied. I mean, you got the master Yoda questions and you're going to have another, tr another trick questions, I don't know. But what would make you, the same way you would ask a student, what would make you a good uh, full professor, a good head of the second year, for the master in international management? Uh, well, uh, I'm a bit influenced by the first part of your question to Audrey. <laughs> uh, I think my most important job is to give the students as much as possibility to have um, more insights for their professional career project and to network in this regard. Um, meaning that many often uh, students, even at the last year of studies, huh, but don't have really a very clear idea of what they want to do afterwards. And, uh, and so it's the last year where they can really uh, find out more about um, more specific job profiles uh, and also talk to people who are doing them. So I put them also uh, in touch with a lot of people through the conferences and the teaching uh, who are uh, on the job and then also uh, afterwards through our alumni network uh, on specific uh, job um, uh, projects that students might have. Um, then um, we also propose um, um, what we call company projects uh, where students work for two months full time on a real consulting mission uh, for a company. Uh, and here too, the point of that is to help them um, put to practice 
all the things that they have learned during the two years. And um, very often the students use these type of, of uh, projects to either do an internship afterwards on the project or um, uh, to find out also if the area of um, the task that they did would be something that they would like to work in really afterwards in a, in a job. So that is for me the main point of my job in this second and last study year. Okay, Mehdi, uh, do you know what you want to do afterwards? Yes, I do. Can you tell us about so, it? Yes. Yes, so I think thanks definitely this master's and uh, internships. I have a clear idea now, and it's mainly going to be in a role related to project management and consultancy with companies seeking to transform various aspects of their organizations, maybe in finance or supply chain. And, and would you say your experience at Toulouse School of Management and in the meme has really helped you build that career, build that, that project? Yes, I'd say absolutely, because yeah, I came with prior work experience, but then basically learning the, the basics or the theories as well involved in the foundation of management and managing a company in general internationally, I guess also drove me towards that idea of accompanying or consultation. And then it solidified with the internship experience for after the first year I did a math, an internship, sorry. And the role kind of propelled me to have this ambition now because I enjoyed it and I felt like it was a role that I could see myself in because it was also global. It allowed me to basically apply aspects of the theories I had learned and understand better everything that was taught. So I definitely decided that this is the path I would like to take in terms of career. All right, to become a, a, a fully Jedi, a fully accomplished Jedi, I guess. Okay, well, thank you for answering my question. Let's move on to extra time. I had no idea, Master Yoda would be so inspiring. Okay, extra time is about, it's two minutes, three minutes that, that we have left. And you can tell us things that haven't been mentioned yet or on the contrary, things that uh, has already been said and you really want to emphasize on it. Mehdi, what would be the, I don't know, the conclusion of this interview? Okay, I'd say my conclusion is, if you're watching this, know that this is a very, it's going to be a wonderful experience. You have nothing to lose, apply. If you fit the description, definitely do your best now to ensure that you basically get the international experience, at least some. Make sure you speak, like you perfect your English level. And aside that, have a clear professional objective or even a, an ideal, basically, your end goal or objective. It can all be refined within time, but then you have nothing to lose, apply. And also, it's going to be a very enriching experience in your life you'll never forget. So I definitely recommend 10 over 10. Thank you, Mehdi. Nicola, what would be your conclusion? Um, well, my conclusion would be a bit the same like Medis to say it's a wonderful program, <laughs> but from my uh, teacher perspective, I enjoy a lot uh, meeting um, or teaching in this program uh, and coordinating um, the second year uh, because it's always a very enriching experience also for the professors. And this is why also we have a lot of loyal professors who come uh, for years already. Um, we, and the second point we didn't mention so much uh, was the diversity. We talked a lot about national diversity, uh, but then also uh, know that this program has um, partnerships with engineering schools. And so we have also here in the second year, about in eight to 10 students coming from engineering schools, uh, staying for all courses in the second year. So they do a double degree with the engineering school, basically. Uh, and that is also a very nice, um, uh, effect in terms of uh, diversity and uh, learning um, and cross-fertilization between very different perspectives and which is very enriching for the students and also for the professors. Well, thank you for highlighting that point. Audrey, the last words. I actually have two, two points that I'd like to highlight. Uh, the first one we mentioned in the cliche session that Toulouse is a nice student city and a nice place to live. Um, I'd like to add that Toulouse has also a very um, strong ecosystem. Uh, of course, I mean, you must be familiar with Airbus, with 
big names such as Continental, uh, such as Pierre Fab, or all these big actors. So this is a very rich uh, ecosystem also for our students uh, who are willing to work, like Mehdi said, after this master, uh, is a, where he would like to work in France. So we already have a very strong ecosystem here in Toulouse, and of course, not mentioning the whole national context. Uh, and another point, <clears throat> the first question you asked me, Guillaume, was about the, the selection criteria. And I'd like to highlight uh, one point about the motivation letter. Um, as this program is a generalist master, um, we are open to any profile. We have had, for instance, uh, students who were chef in cuisine. We had, uh, we had in the past a ballet dancer. Uh, of course, most of the students have a, an economics or management background, but we also have, um, I would say, different profiles. Or, um, and thus, what is very important in your motivation letter, if you are watching us and listening to us today, um, dear applicant, tell us who you are. Tell us what's specific about you. Um, tell us your story and tell us what you could bring to the program. Because it's, uh, as Nicolas said, and as Medi said, we really value diversity and richness of experience. And everyone has something different to share. And this is really what we, we value in this program. So be um, very transparent about that in the, in the motivation letter. That's, that's, that's really important for us. Well, I think they got the message. Thank you, Adria. Thank you, Nicola. Thank you, Mehdi. Thanks to the three of you for answering all my questions. If you're looking for a school that will show you the path, the path ahead that will lead to a career, an international career it has Sulu School of Management with their Master in International Management. Thank you for watching Campus Channel. I hope to see you soon.